Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and of course, welcome back to reality after the, uh, <clears throat> I called the uh, newstainment, uh, the uh, little dance of, uh, pre-range dance, of course, between Barack Obama and uh, Mr. Romney. <clears throat> now, the, uh, of course, the, last night, the issues, as we mentioned yesterday, of substance that weren't going to be discussed uh, were, number one, They never talked about the uh, fiscal cliff. They never talked about foreign policy such as, are we going to back a a current or soon attack, a preemptive attack on Iran and Syria? They probably said, no, no, we're not going to do anything militarily, although what they've already done is an act of war. But the most serious thing is they never even mentioned one word about Fukushima, about an international consortium of of nations trying to assist the Japanese to contain this with tents over these open uh, pools, Yesterday, we mentioned most of the hour that we thought that the story was primarily just a grass fire, but we spent some time afterward. At the end of, this, of the hour, we said, well, we're getting a report that uh, Alexander did that, that there was, really was an explosion. Well, I went and analyzed it afterward. We discovered a couple of really serious anomalies. And the first one, and we hope to have Alexander on here shortly, was that uh, there was a article that was dated uh, on the just a couple of days ago in the Decan Herald that uh, confirms an explosion and leakage at the nuke plant and it was dated the 23rd of October but in fact it was referring to an article that was going back to the 12th of March 2011. This uh, has smells has all the smell of what I call a PSYOP. Now why PSYOP now? Well I'll tell you why. <clears throat> when you have a grass fire, first you can't throw cigarette butts at open grass it's drying out in the fall in Japan now, because it's pretty far north, <clears throat> it's going to dry out. It's, they have good seasons with a rad suit on because you're not walking around the outside of the plant without a rad suit on. So there's nobody throwing cigarette butts. Uh, the only other thing that can trigger it off would be lightning or electrical problems, which you can be certain of. They've shut down any power in the area except the power they need for whatever they're doing in the main plant or the uh, housing of quarters. If you uh, want to do what I call a... Um, intellectual autopsy of what probably happened as you see when you hear uh, hoofbeats it's probably horses and not zebras is it was probably a, at least an explosion of some type most likely hydrogen most likely from the quarium deep in the ground there was a burp of radiation and debris that was thrown through the air and what I'd like to know if we see the pictures there if it was only one area on the perimeter of the plant that was a grass fire or if it was two or three areas <clears throat> and sectors that were separated by either buildings concrete or anything that could have acted as a barrier for grass fire. If it's in two sectors, then you know there was an explosion at some one central point that threw debris in different directions and set off the grass fire. So those are questions we're raising. So it means that uh, as of the story last week that you talked about, Chris, when they talked about the Los Alamos discovery of a way of actually identifying the, the actual size and the direction and depth of the corium using advanced uh, technology to look at uh, uh, cosmic rays and cosmic ray shadows, etc., and that kind of things from the cor- corium. What we're we're seeing is a disinformation story that's popping out on the weekend, two days, by the way, after <clears throat> the actual event supposed to happen, where the grass fires occurred. So what it means is they're freaked out. They're trying to dissuade people from believing the alternative media by putting out a story, which a lot of the alternative media jumped on, and believed when they actually didn't go back and kind of fact check we fact checked and at the end of the show yesterday we said well there was an explosion in fact it's my feeling now that it was probably a warning explosion it's one that's probably happened repeatedly this one here was was enough to throw debris probably to trigger off the grass fires Uh, we know the initial plant blowing up uh, the building three which is the uh, uh, cooler uh, the mox uh, fuel reactor cooling pool uh, was a detonation. According to Arnie Gunnarsson, <clears throat> if you look at his videos over at, uh, you'll see that Arnie talks about the fact this exceeded 1,000 miles per hour, which means it was a, a high velocity explosion, probably caused by a hydrogen explosion triggered nuclear detonation because plutonium is extremely touchy and uh, uh, it's really easy to trigger off a nuclear explosion. In fact, the very first bomb that was exploded was a plutonium bomb well before. Uh, the so-called Manhattan Project was even started. This is a, uh, a fantasy that the Manhattan Project was the start of the first nuclear explosions. So um, what do you think, Chris? Does that thesis make any sense that they probably had some kind of explosion that threw debris and triggered off the grass fire? 
Yeah, you know, I'm, I would sure love to see more, you know, of course, you know, I'm an analyzer and I need a lot of information and all to go out there. But what we discussed, let me just say that after yesterday's show, within 20 minutes, I was, on, I was back on the phone leaving you a message saying, listen, that story doesn't check out with me. I went back, I wasn't anywhere near my office. Uh, and I didn't have the resources to look it up, but uh, I, I made it back there. And then all of a sudden, uh, I was I saying that Idano, well, Idano quit. He or he was replaced uh, uh, sometime this summer. So it's the, the article. Yeah, yeah. Me. But the fact is, the article was put in the in Decan Herald in India. <clears throat> it was updated. Actually, they have it updated for the twenty third of October. That story was purposely put there to uh, confuse people over the real events because <coughs> it, for the real events so they could that, that tells me that there's something that they're trying to cover up which exactly. means the situation is probably worse and we're not getting data <clears throat> we have here's a number of questions we were asked I sent information to Senator Wyden and Senator Feinstein here in California who's my senator no response. I sent him a copy of my paper that I gave to the Academy of Environmental Medicine. You've probably seen that paper, which is being published by the Academy. Uh, Dr. William Ray said the Academy board thought it was excellent. It explained the real seriousness of the situation. It is the biggest and most serious ongoing and increasing environmental disaster in human history. And yet, we don't have one word last night in the, quote, dance of the two uh, fairies, <laughs> call them, <laughs> the dance of the two fairies, uh, last night pretending that they're really going to deal with hard issues, trying to kind of posture and look presidential or act aggressive, thinking it's like a boxing match, you know, this is what Obama's doing, just acting very, very incompetent. Uh, at least Romney looked a little bit presidential. But nonetheless, they never cut touch on any real issues. They didn't talk about the fiscal cliffs. They didn't talk about Japan. They didn't talk about the fact that if they start a nuclear war and attack the Boucher reactor, they're going to breach the reactor uh, with nuclear weapons that are going to release a lot of radiation. And no one's talking about the real, you know, as I say, the 10 billion ton purple elephant in the, in the living room, which is Fukushima and other nuclear reactors say in Japan that are easily could go the same way as Fukushima. We know that there are other plants that were many miles away that were hit by the superquake that lost or breached the uh, containment areas, didn't lose total control, but we know that other reactors in Japan had problems. Uh, so that's why it's not just a matter of them shutting down because they're doing maintenance. They were shut down because the earthquake was so bad it damaged these other reactors as well. And that's one of the stories we're not hearing, that the Fault lines that run from Sendai right through OI, right through the Chiba reactor systems toward from Mount Fuji, those fault lines are likely to blow a whole lot more plants than just Fukushima, which, by the way, was a nuclear weapons development plan for plutonium detonators for nuclear warheads. That's what we're really talking about. We're literally gearing out for World War III for the release of the most deadly weapons in history. And one of the things I'm concerned about is the current and conventional nuclear weapons only occur if you have current and conventional old-style technology nuclear plants. No nuclear plants, no nuclear weapons, which is why I agreed with Mitt Romney. We cannot allow Iran to have any nuclear power, conventional or otherwise, because ultimately, whether it's this regime or a future one, they're going to get the bomb, and then they're going to miniaturize it, and then we're going to have to deal with micronukes. So, <clears throat> you know, the Pakistanis have not been those threats because otherwise their special forces would be flying into Waziristan and taking out their nuke plant as well, which, by the way, they have at least 150 nukes, and within a year they'll be on par with France or Britain. So Pakistan is really revving up their plant to make a lot more nukes. No nuke plant, no nukes. So what do you think about all the other plants in Japan? No one's talking about that. No word last night. And I think this grass fire... In the sense, it's not you know. So when you see smoke, there's fire. I think there's nuclear fire underground, and I think there's burps of explosions. And uh, this disinformation op sure s smells that they're trying to to make the alternative media look like yahoos, when in fact we're the only ones reporting on the truth. And if they listen to the Nutramedical Report, Chris Harris and our nuclear experts, we'll soon have Arnie Gunderson as well. They'll know what's really going on, which is horrifying. Back in a moment.
Welcome back. And uh, <clears throat> Chris, I want you to repeat what you said on the, on the break. It's really important that people grasp a whole lot of what we call tough technical questions are not being answered. By the way, not a word was said, mentioned last night about the Fukushima Daiichi disaster. Not a word was said about the fact that downwind, we are the primary tailpipe radiation zone, North America and the Northern Hemisphere. And by the way, it's also crossing the Southern Hemisphere to, a, <clears throat> to uh, the eastern coast of Australia, where they identified it, New Zealand and elsewhere. So it doesn't just stay north of the equator. So please repeat what you mentioned on the break. Uh, these tough questions, we're not getting any answers. Well, the, the, the question is, you know, you have a repeatable experiment. That is, uh, at least three out of four of the Fukushima units don't have a reactor building anymore due to a very large explosion. And to me, that means that that's, that's a pretty good repeatable experiment. You get a station blackout, you don't have cooling water, and within a few hours, you know, under, under a day or a day and a half, you get an explosion, and that was repeatable. So to me, that means that there's a design flaw, in, I mean, I, I'm, I know I'm stating the obvious. I hate doing that, but I'm saying there's a lot of money tied up in in these particular plants. They're all over Japan. They're all over the United States, and maybe that's why. I'm just I'm just putting it out. Maybe mm. that's why there's the fake articles to try to control and wrestle it back under under well, the wall. What they want to do is they want to control and wrestle back the uh, the information pipeline into the regular media that's doing nothing and discredit the alternative media because they don't want people crying wolf. And there are certain elements, I'm not going to name them, that cry wolf when they see the slightest bit of news, whether or not they vetted it properly, and cry wolf. Now, this disaster is going to happen. I don't know what day it will happen, but it's already having ongoing burps. Publicly, they've announced, a, was it two months ago, the 61st major release of radiation from Fukushima, which was done on purpose because they couldn't control it, so they released it into the ocean and into the air. The fact is there's are non-controlled releases where there's volcan what we call hydrovolcanic venting, where these steam jets occur because the zirconite cladding and the tritium uh, generating high in hydrogen down underground is creating superheated steam jets that can go for kilometers, 10, 20 kilometers out in the ocean. They can go all the way to Tokyo and connect to these underground trains. They can follow uh, literally along the fault lines of the ground. And uh, they can pop up anywhere in somebody's backyard. They can go and pop up a schoolyard, a building. They can go into a heating plant. Uh, I mean, anywhere. And <clears throat> what people need to understand is what's going probably on underground under Fukushima is there's a building, corium, hydrovolcanic, volcanic explosion going to happen. And it will happen in either small burps or big burps. This is probably a bigger burp of radiation that's through hot radioactive debris that actually set the grass fire. Now, if we can get photos or video, it indicates that more than one sector at a disparate distance around the plant that was blocked by concrete or buildings, then we know there was a central point of explosion. That means the timing of this with a false story tells me that there's something very bad about to happen there. Uh, the second thing that we have is last night, no one talked about the fact that they're literally saying, if Israel, quote, if Israel attacks, we're going to back them up. And both of them, I call it, didn't, which, didn't know which one was Tweedledee and which one was Tweedledum last night. But they're both pretty damn dumb, thinking you can hit a nuclear reactor or you're going to hit the centrifuges that are buried a mile down or any of these so-called false missile silos, and there's five to ten false missile silos for every real one for the Shahib-3 missile that can strike even Europe. Turkey, anywhere in the Middle East, including European cities. Uh, this is just pure craziness. You're not going to settle this with the, with the barrel of a gun because the Iranians have the biopreparat. They have the most advanced biological weapons from Russia, from the fall of the Soviet Union. They have fuel air bombs. They have biological weapons. They have chemical weapons uh, that they have co-developed with the Syrians who have the largest supply of RDX and VX nerve gas and other nasties. A lot of them they were actually given to Saddam Hussein. I know I actually saw the receipts given to Saddam from the U.S. Uh, uh, Biological Weapons Repository back in the 80s when he was fighting the Iranians. I actually saw the receipts. So people say, oh, Dr. Diggle, you're just talking off your hat. No, I'm not. I actually saw the receipts of the biological weapons sent to Saddam when he was one of our guys. He was our bad dog. Now, the fact they're not talking about this means that at some point Israel is going to hit the Bashir reactor. We're not dealing with that mess, which is going to be bad. But the bigger problem is 50, 60 years of nuclear waste sitting in all these reactors, not just at Fukushima, but at Oe, at Chiba, 
plants all over Japan, sitting especially in the north, on fault lines that are now 500% more active than they were before March 11th. And there's no international action on the part of either one of these so-called presidential candidates to deal with the biggest disaster that could affect American culture. Because if they have a major release of radiation, people will literally have to go into their homes like they're in a decon and have to wear masks <clears throat> and have to be be aware of the fact that they're going to get so many uh, becquerels of radiation from food, air, and water every day. And it's going to bioaccumulate. I mean, in northern Japan, the police have been told, don't have children for two years, and that's in public records. So uh, let's address this. So where are we going? I mean, obviously, this is this disinformation not really pisses me off. But they would put out a story like this and purposely... Uh, lie to people and then they don't come up with a reason as to why when it's delayed 48 hours why there was this fire around Fukushima this is not a minor story that oh there was a grass fire so what no if the grass fire was triggered off by a hydrogen or a transient nuclear explosion on the plant we need to know right uh, oh absolutely we need <clears throat> to know I and mean, it was very highly suspect that, that the timing and the release of that Reuters uh, article after after all the really really we did a lot of work and research and on, on discrediting <laughs> that other report that earlier YouTube and saying no that, that's just not true and you, you know that's not that's not the only thing I mean I see all kinds of nonsense you know every day I mean the stuff I look at it and say well you know we'll, we, we check it out and if, if it's you know if it's really nothing I don't even bother you with it you know there's there's things like I wouldn't bother you with and I wouldn't have bothered you with that either t- today to be honest with you yeah and so uh, uh, <laughs> You know, but the suspect timing of the next Reuters release, you know, all of a sudden, you, you would ask me about it, and I said, okay, I checked this, I checked that, I did this, I did that, I looked at a lot of different uh, sources. I always try to use multiple and diverse uh, resources before I bring anything to your attention. And this, this, you know, this didn't add up, and then when we were on the air yesterday, I said, well, that's really suspect, you know. I, I, I'm not, you know, <laughs> I'm usually, I'm more thorough than that, and... Uh, and I'm glad that we were able to... Uh, well, we, we, we basically identified there was a problem. We did a little, kind of a little intellectual autopsy for later, and we still have more questions and answers, but we have no action. This so-called idiot in the White House, Obama, is a prancing rooster, and he just says, you know, basically, his, here's his mindset. If you just go along with the program and believe in me, everything will be fine because I am the Messiah. And then we have Mitt Romney who says... I'm not going to tell you exactly how I'm going to manage it, but don't worry. I'm going to I'm going to cut it to the bone, and America will work. Now, I honestly think Romney could do a better job, but neither of these guys are really guys that I want to have as my president. But I want Romney a lot more than I want Obama. Okay, so it's a bad deal. And the fact they won't deal with Fukushima, let's say on date X, sometimes say 2013 or maybe before at the end of 2012. We have a major release <clears> that nobody can hide because the alternative media and the alternative people that have got radiation detectors say, oh my God, they get up in Oregon or St. Louis or Pennsylvania or California and their radiation detector went skyward. The uh, blogosphere is going to spread it. We're going to know real quick. Hello? Congratulations. <laughs> second half of this uh, first hour we're going to make open lines if you have any questions about the uh, debate last night the little dance uh i saw the whole debate i was amazed at how nothing of real substance was being dealt with specifically uh for example when you're going to start uh, one of the things that i that obama raised which i think romney could have picked up on and clarified one of the big issues that's happened in the last year and a half is the repatriation of 1.7 trillion with a t dollars of ta- of basically taxes owed by U.S.-based transnational corporations that want the tax rate, and they're lobbying both parties to try to get the tax rate down, and the president, to reduce it from 35% down to like five and a quarter percent. That's ridiculous. I mean, even if you gave them some kind of a deal, and you've got a giant deficit in the country. Secondly, you have to do the math. Even if you tax the so-called 1% or 2%, 100% of their income, you're not going to reduce the deficit. The first thing you need to do is get rid of and write off the debt that is literally owed to ourselves of the Federal Reserve, which is a non-federal, non-reserve bank. It's not actually a foreign banking entity or, if you want to call it, structure. Secondly, you need to take it over. You don't abolish it because the banks want you to abolish it. They don't want to have rules. 
So you want to take it over uh, and have a regulatory agency standing over it. Now, I'm not talking about a kind of a centralized, uh, you know, uh, government control system. You need to have, you could even have academics that you hire on a uh, time basis, one, two year term, and they have to have performance guarantees to monitor the uh, Fed Reserve that cannot have members in the Fed Reserve that are foreign banks. We now also have the Fed Reserve loaning money out, and we don't have a full lot. We have a partial lot. We've had uh, experts on talking about the audit of the Fed. Um, Ron Paul was the only one who wanted a complete audit. And, of course, not just audit. We need to take it over. We need to have regulations like Glass-Steagall back in. We need to write off the speculative debt that they create out of thin air. Uh, but none of this was discussed last night because they think the real answers are going to be uh, the dance that they talked about last night. Now, I think Romney's answers are more concise, but it needs to flesh them out, especially things like repatriation of debt. Uh, Jason in Pennsylvania, you have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, God bless you, Dr. Bill. How are you today? Uh, a little on fire. I uh, had a really good sleep last night. I'm, uh, awesome. uh, I'm take, I took my cognition ignition, so my brain is all firing on all cylinders. Well, that's and, great. Uh, and I, I don't like being treated like somehow these fools that call themselves our presidents think they have a higher IQ or they have, they have more love of the nation than we as the citizens. And Amen to They did that. an interesting study. And they found that our so-called presidential and state governors and their presidents have an IQ bridge by about 15 to 20 points lower, right. lower than the average po- that one. <clears throat> than the average population of people that are actually out there working. So yeah. I'm not impressed. Uh, neither one of these guys, no matter what degrees, they say they got summa cum laude, which means they could kiss the ass of their professors <laughs> faster than anybody else. Uh, I'm not impressed with either one of them because the reason. But I am more impressed with Romney because America's a business. But he needs to have a lot of choke chains on him. Firstly, his nickname is Flip Hananiah Romney. He flips Amen. on everything. And well, Flip Romney, he doesn't even act as a good conservative Mormon, which, by the way, thinks he's going to be a god someday, and he's going to have his own planet, yeah. and his wife's going to have to, he's going to have to call her through the veil. Yeah. By the way, if you're female, if you're called through the veil by the special name that your husband knows, you don't get to go to heaven, and you don't get to have spirit babies forever. So, wow. uh, you know, the, the problem is it's like that's the old story. If you're, gonna tell a, if you're going to tell a lie, you want to tell one that's so colossally large, even someone with an intelligence smart enough to be a lawyer or a doctor or whatever, might believe it. So you get some real smart, non-drinking, non-smoking Mormons that that believe this foolishness yeah. and don't understand that God, Jesus himself said, don't you know you are as gods? You don't have to go to a Mormon church. You don't even have to go to any church, to be honest with you. Amen. The church is where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. Right. You have to... You have to be a Christian. You don't become one. Well, you and you don't have to do anything in order to be, uh, quote, saved. All you have to do is believe that Jesus is your Savior and you believe Amen. that God directs your conscience and you start living every moment for God. And guess what God says? You know, because you live for me, I'm going to fuse my spirit with your soul and my will you have submitted to. You're now no longer a bond servant, but you're now a son or daughter of the Most High. Amen. What we have is we have Obama, who is a... Uh, 32nd degree Mason, which means he's a Satanist. We have Romney, who's taken an oath in the uh, temple ordinances before someone's taking the ordinances as uh, a proxy for Satan in the Mormon temple. Every Mormon temple has one. Uh, and they say, man, in straight of the doctrine and covenants, man must fall so he may be uh, as God, knowing both good and evil. Uh, that is actually a reverse play on the Genesis lie, which is yep. they would choose both good and evil, and that is taken from the knowledge of the tree of, the, of good and evil. That means yep. I don't need to consult you, God, anymore. It's not a piece of fruit. Whoever exactly. thinks that is like a child. Uh, the real issue is I don't need to consult you, God, whether it's uh, genetic engineering or cloning or making half-human animal hybrids or killing people with, you know, with uh, carpet bombing Bet Dresden or yep. sending bioweapons or race-specific bioweapons. No, no, no. I, God, just step aside. I'm a little exactly, more righteous yeah. than you. you know I'm so advanced Bill, now. Yeah, you know that's, that's Dr. the problem. Dr. Bill, that's, that's one of the biggest problems with the New Agers. You know, I think they'd be willing to get on board with the whole Jesus thing if they just could understand the fact that you know, the Garden of Eden was not about us getting knowledge, and it was a good thing. The only thing that was in the Garden was God and man and the knowledge of good and evil. We didn't need knowledge of evil. We didn't need that. We had Well, no, no, evil is real simple. If you're always consulting God on every action, every thought of your intention of your heart, you're not capable of evil. Amen. And if you're not connected to God, 
nothing you can do can do anything, even when it, it looks good and it looks nice. Just give an example, okay? Just look at the Mormon church. They store food, they're preppers, a lot of them, okay? Yep. Probably only 5% to 10% have all of the things the church wants for them. But they take care of their own. They don't see people starving or other things. They have social programs. Right. The Christian church, by and large, is not doing their job. They don't take care of the sick and the elderly and the people in hospitals as much as they should. Amen. Instead of having thick carpeting and fancy halls where they can have you know big bands singing and so on, their first ministry is to the souls of people that are broken and broken women that have had abortions and families where men have, uh, have suffered loss of job and people that are suicidal. It's to take the brokenhearted. It's also to take people who have been monsters that have repented and say, you know, some of the most pro-life people have been abortionists. Right. That's why when people want to condemn even Romney and, as a Mormon and say he can't be pro-life now, and they put old, old clips up, yeah. it just makes me ill. More, we need to pray for these people. These are men who are in the grip of Satan. Both of them are high-level Masons. Both of them have worship ceremonies before a proxy of Satan. Okay, And they're both our candidates. That's why we, as a country, are under judgment. We're under more judgment. It's going to be faster, more ugly, and nastier if Obama gets in. And Romney, we might buy time. But beyond that, our nation is under judgment as we speak. Yeah. We have another, yeah. Any other questions? We have another caller. Go ahead. Yep, your your name and where are you from? Um, Nikol Nikolai from Wisconsin. Nikolai, go go right ahead. Your question and your comment. Um, well, Romney and religion is religion. I I just have I don't understand what, what does his religion have to do with the politics? Everything. They suppo they religion has re religion has everything to do with it. Okay, let's put it this way. Uh, have you met a a decent atheist that has a firm grasp? that ethics is just like, the, for example, the Constitution. Do you believe the U.S. Constitution is a living document, or do you believe it is one where the values are fixed for the Constitution? Is it living or fixed? Well, I'd, I'd say... It's just to answer that question, living or fixed, is the U.S. Constitution a living document as the current Supreme Court rules, or is it a fixed where the values and rights... Half, half? No, it's it's, no. it's it's not living, okay, it's fixed. fixed. Okay, now, fixed. does the Bible make statements that are fixed in terms of ethics and the, uh, and the, and the sanctity of life and all the other things that have been said by, said by Jesus and the Old Testament prophets that spoke for God? Uh, those have those things, God said, I change it not. Now, here's the problem. Whenever you're a moral relativist, whether you belong to a cult or a religious group or you're a transhumanist, Everything is relative. If you're living in the early 21st century, your morals are relative. So, yes, religion has a lot to do with it. Now, the average Mormons are actually more conservative, believe it or not, than most so-called American Christians. The American Christians are mocked by Christians, say, in Ethiopia or elsewhere where they are under persecution, and the most conservative Christians are in the Mideast where they're suffering or dying, or even in China where if you have one sheet of the Bible, you get sent to a Laodai camp. So... You know, we need to talk about what really matters. And yeah, his face matters, but he should be more conservative than he's been in the past. I know. Welcome back, and... Um Please uh, go on with your statement, because I think it's important. It opens up an area where we have the call. The alternative media kind of will, uh, you know, not see beyond the smoke and the mirrors that America is the most dangerous and the most powerful nation in history, not only in terms of quantum technology, military technology, but information technology. Every phone, fax, and email on Earth, there was a Project Echelon, for example, was debated over a decade ago in the European Parliament. Everyone's email, everyone's fax on there. So we're talking about Russia, China, everywhere is being monitored by AI systems. If we want to talk, knock out an entire continent, Russia, China, uh, and completely fry anything electronic, including their old tube style Tupolev jets, etc., we can fry them. What about we can China set off. Is attacking our computer systems right now. Look, like let me explain. These uh, DNS and these other computer systems operational attacks are completely being monitored. It's being set up as a modus to have control over the internet on us. The real target is they don't want us to have freedom of information travel. The fact is that the the internet was developed by the World Wide Web by the NSA, no such agencies, in combination with the uh, people at CERN. Uh, I happen to know that they built an icon, a thing called a virtual world project, in exquisite detail 
for everybody in the first and second world, and they have literally a tolerance even of buildings and roadways down to one and a half centimeters from space with military grade GPS coordinates technology and a virtual copy of Earth. They built an icon for everybody. They have a database to know what color socks you like, what newspapers, when you get up in the morning. And if they have these smart meters, they'll soon know when you have your toast in the morning and when you decide to use your iPad because they even track your iPad coordinates. In fact, the new one coming out in March can actually tell you when you're on in your iPad because you open it by putting your fingerprints anywhere on the screen. It'll identify you rather than your kid who can only get certain access to certain areas and has your GPS coordinates. It even knows when and where you took the photos or video. Let's, let's and it uploads it to the cloud. So yeah, what people have to understand is America is the dragon nation. And these other nations don't get it. Okay? And that includes Russia and China. It's not that there are smart people in Russia or China. But America, over 70 years, outspent everybody by unbelievable amounts of money because we printed it. And we built weapon systems that are beyond imaginations. And now I'm talking about informational weapon systems, genetic engineering weapon systems, and other things. The, the reason why the Soviet Union fell is they couldn't outspend America. It wasn't because they weren't smart people or determined people. America outspent them. That's it. No, the reason why they fell is because, uh, I mean, they... The, uh, the Cold War stopped because we outspent them. They failed not because we outspent them in the nuclear in the Cold War. It's because they we, couldn't, we outspend. They, they couldn't they keep couldn't up with us. Their, their people they, anymore. They couldn't feed it well. Firstly, a centralized control government, which Obama wants to bring, and of course that's going to happen. But uh, their sphere of influence contracted because they they couldn't make the deals and the military uh, issues, and they couldn't continue the proxy wars and everything. The proxy war in Afghanistan was literally we were baited Russia into going to attack the Pashtun and the Afghanistanis, and we knew it would bankrupt them because they didn't have the size of the economy. That's why America's navy is is bigger by 17 times than the, all the other navies on Earth. That's why we, our military is... And when you look at things like the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, which they're working on all the bugs now, they're $270 million, $7 million off the off the thing. They want to buy 2,000 of them. People have no idea the space-based weapons, the geotectonic weapons, the to plasma take, weapons. To take, to take they have no the idea what America has. They can create a nuclear explosion by superheating plasma over every city on Earth and within seconds vaporize it with an equivalent to a 100 megaton explosion without even firing a missile. So the real issue is right now we have these proxy wars going on where they're trying to literally jockey of, well, yeah, we want China to be able to do all the manufacturing because we want to create this new world order and we've got to collapse America. But the real issue is they want the U.S. Federal Reserve to become the World Reserve Bank. And by the currency war, which is going on, which is QE3, they're going to force the Chinese to devalue their currency. They're going to force the central-controlled Chinese economy, which is printing money just like the Fed Reserve. They're going to force the Russians to make deals. And then... Maybe positive things are quote, like the defense versus policies of LaRouche. But the real issue is they're jockeying for positions in the new world order. And it's probably no more than a couple years away before we move to a world biometric currency, which the Bible says is the mark of the beast. And the mark will come from not Brussels, not from Moscow, not from Denmark or Japan. It's going to come from America. America. Anybody who thinks that they can take on America and not be annihilated is crazy. And that means well, annihilated yeah, but, within seconds. We're not even talking about nuclear weapons. We're talking people, about weapons so beyond people, nuclear weapons that they don't understand it. The people like Ahmed Najad, they don't care if they'll be if the old people will be killed, if they will be annihilated. They'll, Look, first of all, let me, let me explain what's going to happen in Ahmadinejad. Ahmadinejad is a, is a joke, okay, even among the mullahs. The mullahs have all the power. He's like a clown out here. And, he, and, and you have to understand the the flowery, exaggerated language of the Middle East. When they say these things, like threatening Israel, Iran could no more threaten Israel in this idea that they have a nuke. First off, I don't think they should have a nuke or nuclear plants because it's dangerous. And Muslim countries should never have nuclear weapons, but that's only the start of it. They got the poor man's nuke already. The poor oh, man's nuke is by a preparat and the... Yeah, but that's really bad. But they got the poor man's nuke, which is biological weapons. And even America, 85% of our budget is now not making bioweapons that you can't control. If you make a bioweapon, let's say flu or some other virus, like a super Ebola that can spread, and there's a delay before it kills you and you spread it to other people, 
you can't control these weapons because they keep on genetically modifying themselves and you can't stop it. And even if you started off with a quote virus that you think is race specific, like they've said they thought SARS was, which is still a little skeptical if it is race specific, what happens is it's going to mutate. Just like the H1N1 flu. Assad have both biological and chemical. And exactly. So. If, right, uh, well, they can knows. threaten all they want, but here, here's what will happen. Uh, first off, the real issue that's going on in, in there is that the most, the most powerful thing is not a nuclear weapon. It's the, it's the dollar. The dollar is, right now, with the embargoes, which are going to tighten considerably under either Obama or Romney, Iran is toast. They're probably no more than a way of, a more, no more than three to six months away from mass starvation of eating, getting staples because no one's going to be able to ship their oil. Nobody's going to be able to process their oil. Nobody's going to be able to process bank accounts, including the Shanghai Bank of Iraq. The same going on with Syria. That regime is about to fall. Uh, the Syrians are real tough people. They don't want this nobody? to fall. China and Russia are supporting Iran. How how is it that you say nobody will if they? Uh, they can't. They'll have to back off. They, they're going to sacrifice Iran. They'll sacrifice Iran and Syria because China wants to make a deal. If they can't but sell Russia their goods, Russia is, has a single economy based on oil. They're the number one oil producer on earth. If they can't sell their oil, that the reason why they don't want to intervene in this war is because they're stuffing their bank accounts. Because to the Russians, it's great. You, you know, right now, anything bad in the Middle East is like, keep it going. We want this disaster to keep going because it's stuff in our bank accounts. But the Russian elite, you know, With the, the Russians so many years ago, you, they just you? changed hats. They, they, the Russians just changed hats. The the people that were head of the Communist Party are the same people of the oligarchs now. When we look at Vladimir Putin and all these characters, it's the same characters that were in control before the so-called end of the Cold War. So, yeah. you know, they want to make a deal. They want to have an exchangeable Russian ruble. They want to have uh, an expansion of business and technology. They want American companies to come over there and European companies. They want to be able to build things in China. I mean, everybody wants to not get fried with nuclear weapons and biological weapons, but they want to jockey for positions. And what's going on right now is jockeying for position in the new world order. That's what's going on. And these proxy wars are just a symptom of it. But they know that you can't start a nuclear attack or an air attack on Iran. Because it'll get out of control so fast, you just need to have a half a dozen guys with bioweapons lyophilized in the back of a fridge in U.S. and Canadian and European cities, and you could have plagues kill millions within a week. The so thing, the thing there's no way that you can start a war, a conflict, no matter how big your weapons are or how advanced are space-based weapons, without basically ending civilization. So what they're what they're doing is their major weapon is fear. They want to scare the hell out of the population to agree to their the terms. Thing, the, thing with and the, the thing with the Russian oil is that the uh, U.S. is not the one who is buying it. And if we, and if Russia will stop the, uh, uh, their export of uh, propane to uh, Europe, they're going to freeze this winter. So I don't know if the Russians... Absolutely, uh, absolutely. In fact, the Russians have got a, a choke chain because the North Sea oil is running out. You're exactly correct. And that's why even uh, the taking over the Rokai Tunnel and the new Georgian... Uh, Prime Minister, who is a Russian billionaire, who is really tight with Putin, and uh, and uh, Shakashvili is history now. So you're absolutely correct. Well, it was nice to talk to you. Yeah, I hope people understand. Just to see between the lines, the little dance last night never dealt with Fukushima, never dealt with the fiscal cliff, never dealt with the idea of reducing our military willy nilly uh, craziness. You know. Uh, you know, I'm not militaristic, but I can tell you, you do not reduce your military to the level of Pakistan and nukes and expect to have peace unilaterally. It's not going to happen. You also don't gut Medicare and Medicaid and say we're just reducing with cost controls. Cost controls are not a transfer of $761 billion. Obama is a eugenicist. His plans are crazy, and it's going to be fast, furious, and deadly. <laughs>